Welcome to part one of Data Analytics 101. This is where we're going to actually have a look on data and the bulk of data and how we're going to analyze it. And what you'll learn in this section is on the easy side, we will use some web logs to determine and analyze some statistics. For example, if there's anybody trying to break in or pen, penetrate the website, the web logs will be from a live site without any modifications. Uh, so you'll have to go through to unzip them yourselves and analyze them and put them into data sets and, and, and for, for the analysis. So it actually shows you the whole process from the start to the end. If you need access to the logs, uh, make sure you register on the actual website and download that data. In the more complex section of this data analytics uh, small course, you'll learn how to analyze using Microsoft SQL Express 2012 to create a database and table, using the Enron mail database, import that to your database and developing queries to analyze the Enron data from keyword extraction, drill, drill down reporting using Microsoft SQL Express reporting services and a general analysis of the data. You can extend this later into your organization taking any data you've got as well. Now, First, before we start, we need to understand what is data an analytics. It's the process designed to extract useful information from large quantities of data. You must have heard of the items called big data. Now, you have a huge amount of data in your organization, and you can analyze that to give you ideas around what is going on. Are there any threats or even business intelligence that you can use? The process is to determine unseen connection between data items as well. It usually identifies key risks, possible frauds in your environment, errors, abuse or misuse within system or functional processes. It can also be used to improve the efficiency and business decisions. Now, if we look at the evolution of data analytics within organization, right, and, and what I do here is using the capability maturity model. Right at the bottom, you'll have initial ad hoc queries. This is once-off queries that you'll use either uh, applications such as Excel, Microsoft Excel, uh, any database with SQL uh, or standard query language um, scripts that you've developed. Now, and then also once you see that benefit, you'll start going into a managed environment whereby you'll have a process or a system set up where you have a database backend, you'll import the data there now and then, and then run again ad hoc queries, but a little more in a managed size. Then we'll start document these processes, such as in a defined process. So we'll start developing scripts, have special scripts to run on a daily or weekly basis, end of month to determine any change or any delta in the environment, and then manage and finally optimize. So you'll define the processes, you'll manage, manage the data analytics, and then finally this will become in a managed and optimized phase, become a business process in your organization as well. Now, ad hoc usage is anything from information system auditors, forensic analyst that has a lot of data, business analyst looking at information on how we can improve the business, and any guy, of course, with an, some analytical skills accessing lots of data. So, as an ad hoc user, let's have a look at what we require to start doing our own data analytics. Now, what software packages can we use? Well, I recommend here from a Windows environment, and this will be predominantly in the Windows environment, and you can use other platforms such as Linux with MySQL. However, this is the easiest. Uh, most people use Microsoft Windows and its free operating systems here as well. So there's a numerous packages that we can buy, but normally very expensive for ad hoc use. So what I recommend is Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition 2012. That's the latest edition at the moment at the time of developing this little course. You have SQL Server Express with tools. You have the Management Studio. You have the Local Database System. You have the SQL Server Express with Advanced Services. And then plainly the SQL Server Express Engine. Now what we'll do is focus on um, a couple of these things. So the database engine is required. So we can include up to 10 gigs of storage per database. Express tools gives the ability to create and modify databases, tables, develop SQL queries, etc. Then reporting services allows us to do real-time decisions making reports, drill down capability, and then also there's a full text search capability where high-speed search across MIMO or large text fields can be done. 
Now, first step that you need to do is download and install Microsoft SQL Express. Now, it's actually quite a big download. So, it, it is free. There's some limitations. For example, every database without any logs and, and any other information required is a maximum of 10 gigabytes per database. This is already quite large. So, if you actually need any... Uh, greater support, of course, go to either the standard or enterprise edition as well. Also, limitation includes single process support, however, multiple cores. It will use one gig's maximum RAM. Although you might have more in your machine, it will only allocate one gig maximum to this. Now, your first step to do is what's really important, and often I say within when I speak to the guys in my, some of the larger courses as well, you need as an auditor, as a forensic analyst or a data analyst, need to understand and have SQL well under your knee. You need to learn SQL. It is becoming your power. So the more you know SQL, the better for you as well. Now you can read the free ebook called Introducing Microsoft SQL Server 2012 from Microsoft Learning. So you can Google that and download that. Now also SQL Express Management Studio has predictive typing assisting in query development as well. And we'll go through that as well. Although if you don't use this, the later versions of Microsoft SQL, you can have a application downloaded called SQL Complete Free from a website www.devart.com which gives the same capability to all the Microsoft SQL management environments. Access to the data of course and data format as well. Request a special format information and we'll look at how we can actually manipulate and massage the data for our benefit importing it into the tables as well. The ability to import the tab data to the table as well and as you see as well Microsoft SQL doesn't allow you to import by default from the studio data as well. You can create a database test using the SQL Management Studio. You can right-click and create a database. After the database is created, create a table and right-click on the database to create the table. And then you can design the table based on the field format in, in your data table that you have. Now, what I recommend as well is, is actually stop right here if you want to and actually download the application and so you can be comfortable on creating the database tests and things like that. So understand and start going through SQL. So your first step for data analytics is to understand and learn Microsoft SQL very quickly, the SQL language. Now once you know the SQL language, it is transportable of course between different SQL engines. For example, IBM's DB2, Oracle's SQL Server as well, um, Sybase and there are many SQL engines out there with a very few changes in the actual dialect. Now here's a very good example once we've actually created a table and we know exactly how the table fields are located exactly from the file name that you have given and the command here within Microsoft SQL is bulk insert the table name which you've created, could be test, we created previously, from and you identify where the file is located. And the example I've got here is C colon backslash file name you have dot CSV with and with now in brackets, we've got a field terminator, which is a comma and a row terminator, which is a slash N, which is an escape character for new line and close the bracket and go. This command will import the data. Now, the only criteria here is that the fields have to be defined accordingly as into the table as in the comma delimited file that you have, the CSV file that you get. Otherwise, you may have errors. So it is a bit of a manual process. Now, the next step as well, we can download the Enron database as well. Now, this Enron database, I've got the link down there. You can actually, if you've got the slides downloaded or have, have registered on the site, you can directly link to the site. It is quite large, so you have to um, either uh, get it from a, your data center, your IT department as well, or tell them you are going to download 423 megabytes. Now, also, you need a similar package such as a, a uncompressor or a decompressor, such as WinZip or WinRAR or similar to, so we can extract this database. Now, this is the end of part one, and what we'll do next from the next section is introduce you to actually creating those tables and start analyzing those log files. So your next step is either send me a mail at the 
email address I've specified there. R register at the site as well um, for some of the training as well so you can get access to the log files initially as well. Your ne next step here is to make sure you understand Microsoft SQL because we're going to use it ex extensively as well. Then also from another programming point of view we're going to use another language to create front ends to import the data for us into our databases and I will use Delphi here which is a Pascal based which makes it quite easier which the CEDAR code can be used for any other language such as C++, C Sharp etc. Thank you.